I really wanted a sequential switch for my Eurorack system. And so when I found the Vice Verga from Noise Engineering, I figured, well, who better to buy it from? They're always my first stop. And I did. I got it. And it didn't work exactly the way I expected. And of course, it was uh, something that I dove into pretty deep. And I got some help uh, from Chris there. So I figured if she was going to help me understand this thing, I should leverage the time she spent and try to help other people that might have had the same issues I had understanding it. Um, and now I feel like I really understand it. So first of all, thank you, Chris, uh, for spending that time. That was super helpful. And uh, let's get into it. So first of all, this sequential addressable switch from Vice Verga, it has multiple inputs and outputs. And I think noise engineering themselves say it's their most densely populated uh, from an input output perspective, um, at least at the time it was announced uh, module. So it's uh, it's pretty deep, but eight inputs, eight outputs. It's got CV controls uh, and a few switches and uh, at least one um, potentiometer for offset. So let's go through the settings quickly just to get that out of the way. The group setting we will actually be changing during this, uh, not demo, but explanation. Um, and you can put it in one of three modes, either eight, which means it's one switch with eight inputs and eight outputs. You can put it in group four, which it means it's two switches with four inputs, four outputs each. Or you can put it in the group setting of two, which makes it four actual separate switches with two inputs and two outputs each. That's one of the most important factors for me when I bought this was to be able to have all of those modes. The next setting is the behavior, or they call it BEH, B -E -H, uh, and it's in one of three modes, the way that the steps advance uh, and how the mappings of inputs uh, and outputs happen. First is sequential, so it happens the way you'd expect with a sequential switch. It goes sequentially from uh, the first to the second to the third to the fourth output and the other two modes add randomization so either one to one where inputs and outputs are mapped to each other randomly or one to many or one to uh, any i should say number and that means it could be zero uh, each input maps to zero outputs or each input maps to one or two or many outputs depending on again the group setting uh, how many it could map to and then the next setting is the advanced setting, which is just how will it advance? Will it go forward, reverse, or pendulum? And I'm going to keep it during this whole explanation um, in forward. So we'll look into that. The next is the reset and offset. Reset just resets to the start position. It's CV controllable. Um, and the offset changes the start position. So you can actually start, and I'll explain this a little bit more, uh, once you understand from the video how the start position is determined and what that actually means, but you can change that. And again, it's CV controllable. The advance button or the input, the trigger input is used to advance the switch to the next step. Now, a couple of caveats, the way I'm going to describe this with this static picture on my screen, I added to my screen numbers so you can we can refer to the outputs uh, in number and the inputs by number, just overlaying where the green light would normally be. And another caveat, usually if you have it in certain settings, um, you'll see more than one green light unless you're in setting eight where there's only one switch, but you'll see the lights for the first step or the second step uh, in each of the switches that you've defined based on the group setting. So there would be four lights on in the group setting of two because there's four separate switches, but I'm only showing uh, one fake green light on just for the uh, sake of explanation and simplicity. And I'm not changing the behavior or the advance settings at all. So you can see those are grayed out, but I will be changing the group setting. So let's go into the first simple uh, example, one input. One input starts off when the group setting is two, which means there are four switches. We're only looking at that top switch, which has two inputs and two outputs, starts off input one maps to output one, simple. And when you hit advance, pretty simple, the input one goes to output two. And that feels straightforward. And if you hit advance again, it recycles to the top. Input one goes to output one. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward. So, 
Um, that's the way that the switch works and you feel like, okay, I get this, this is simple. Um, but if we keep going and say, well, what if we have two inputs? And this is a very standard sequential switch setting you know, or, or configuration. You want two different inputs to be switching to a single output. So let's go through that quickly. I've got a red and a yellow input on inputs one and two, which fill up that first switch, two inputs and two outputs. And when we uh, initial, initially start, it's input one goes to output one. Now, this is the caution. This is the view that made me think I understood it. One input um, goes to one output, but there's two inputs to have, and they go to one output. So when you look at one output, it feels really straightforward. Step one, input one goes to output one. Hit advance, step two, input two goes to output one. This is where my mind took a wrong turn. It looks like the light, the LED lit up on number two, on the second LED, looks like it's selecting input two, but it's not. What it's saying is you're in the second position. Input two does map to output one there, but that's where it throws you off. And if you go again, one more advance, it goes back to start. And I felt like, wow, I really understand. It's simple, it's so easy, so straightforward. This is where things go funky for me. And when I put in my first email to noise engineering to say, what is happening? Is my switch broken? So I changed the group setting to four. Now I have two switches, four inputs, four outputs each. And things didn't make sense because initially, yes, input one goes to output one, no problem. But I expected when I hit advance that input two would go to output one, and it didn't. Instead, I got zero volts to output one. And I, for you know, the the you know longest time, I could not figure out what could possibly be happening here. So, um, in step three, when I advance again. Actually, again, I get zero volts to output one, and I'm even more confused. What's going on? And make make things worse, in one more advance, step four, that's when input two shows up at output one. So I have one output, and it goes input one, zero volts, zero volts, out input two. And it just didn't make sense to me. So turns out the LED does not indicate which input is being selected. Like I said, the LED indicates the mapping of the first input to the outputs. So the LED is saying where the first input is going. And the rest of the inputs follow that pattern and wrap to the top of the group. So let me explain. To better understand it, let's make believe we have multiple outputs. We're back to group two. Group two, we have one red output and one yellow output mapping to uh, the input. So that's what you'll see here. The colors are showing where the signal from the input is going. So let's look at these multiple output options. We start off, input one is mapping to output one. Makes sense. Input two is mapping to output two. Makes sense. In other words, input one, the LED is showing where input one is going to output. And the yellow just follows input one. It's going to go to the next, and it's going to output two. Since this is in group two setting, it's going to immediately wrap. So when we go to step two and advance, input two wraps to the top. Input one now is outputting to output two, and input two wrap to the top to output one. And finally, I started understanding, I thought, absolutely, this must be what's happening. And again, I advance and it goes back to where it was. Now, let's look at two inputs like we did with group two, but with groups of four. So it's two switches, four inputs, four outputs each. And now we have two inputs like we did before. Let's take the, a walk through this. And we're going to look at two outputs. So we'll just look at the outputs one and two, basically. In the beginning, Input one goes to output one, no problem. Input two goes to output two because it follows where input one is. And when we advance, both inputs advance to the next outputs. And because there's more room at the bottom of this switch because they're in groups of four, they both scroll down. Input one now goes to output two. Input two goes to output three. We advance again. Input one goes to output three where the LED is. Input two goes to output four. 
And if we advance again, you can imagine what's going to happen here. Input one is going to go to output four. And input two scrolls back up to the top of the switch to go to output one. And then suddenly I realized that's what was happening before when I was getting zero volts at input one. Because if I go back, you can see it starts here. And immediately, oops, sorry, immediately input one is empty. Oh, sorry, output one is empty. Output one gets zero volts on the first advance. Output one gets zero volts on the second advance. Output one gets input two on the third advance. And then on the fourth advance, we go back to start. So this is when I finally got it. I understood it. And so let's start something uh, a little more complex just to make sure we understand it. This is going to be groups of eight, so which means there's one switch. The whole switch is one. We're in group eight. We have three inputs red, yellow, and blue in that order. So of course, the first step is really simple. Input one to output one, input two to output two, input three to output three. We advance one and they scroll down. Input one is now empty, it gets zero volts. So if I've got something actually plugged in there, it's getting zero volts. But now the red input one goes to output two and input two follows to output three and input three follows to output four. And since this is an eight position switch now, it's just gonna keep scrolling down as we advance. Now input one goes to output three and the rest follow. We advance again, input one goes to output four and the rest follow. And again, input one to output five and the rest follow, input one to output six and the rest follow. And now we're gonna see scrolling happen where the blue input, input three is gonna scroll to the top. We advance again, input three scrolls to the top to output one, input one now, is showing where the LED is to output seven, input two to output eight. And then again, we advance input one, showing where the LED is to output eight, and the others wrap to the top, and we go one more, of course, it goes back to start. And if we keep advancing, the same pattern repeats. So let's try something really tricky just to make sure we understand it. We go back to group four, so we've got two switches, one switch, is four inputs and four outputs at the top. And now we're gonna skip an input. What do we think happens here? That skipped input counts. It actually will keep mapping to the outputs in the order we expect. So we've got two inputs and at the start, input one is mapping to output one and input three is mapping to output three. Whatever is missing just maps as zero volts. So since there's no input on input two, output two has zero volts. Same with output four, zero volts, because there's nothing in input four. So we advance and they scroll down. You can see input two is going to wrap faster because it's further down in the switch. We advance again, input two goes to the top and input one is where the LED is on output three. We scroll again, uh, sorry, advance again and, and we scroll down and input one is now where the LED is on output four. We go again and we're back to start. So that's the behavior. We kind of get it now, right? I hope. This is um, Roshevsky is my name on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and SoundCloud. And the key learnings here, the LED does not indicate which input is being output. That was my main problem. The LED indicates where input one gets output. And all the inputs in the group get mapped to the outputs in the order they appear as inputs. And the inputs that hit the bottom of the output group whether you're in two, four, or eight setting, wrap to the top of the output group. Empty inputs send zero volts to the output. So that's it. I hope that helped you. It certainly was uh, tough for me to figure out, but now that I get it, this thing is going to be incredibly useful for me. Hope that helped. Thanks.